Um, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, that's what happens when you have a dad who played as well. What kind of nuggets of wisdom has he imparted on you? Uh, a lot. Uh, just his experience of playing and, and uh, a lot of the mental side of uh, approaching your bats and fielding things and turning the page on everything. Maz, what did you learn about the mental side of the game? Your son just said you shared a little bit of wisdom. Well, you know what? I was very fortunate. I learned from guys like Tom Seaver and Jerry Fusian and Joe Torrey. They're my teammates coming up from the big leagues. So all the things that I was taught and then you kind of pass it down to the generation of generation. I got to be with Willie Mays. Willie Mays taught me a lot of things about the game. And I guess that now it's a All the other players. Can you describe the kind of pride a father feels when his son is able to start his baseball career? Yeah, that's a great question. And I sit here with goosebumps because I grew up just about a mile or two away from here. So I know he's like an old stopping ground when he was a kid. And, you know, as a dad, I don't know if I can be any more proud. You know, I'm, I'm so lucky and fortunate to work for the Yankees. That's a two great organizations and to win two world championships, the Mets and the Yankees. It's kind of special. And now, just to see my son, it, I don't know, I think every dad would feel the same way. It's a special thing. You know, it's going to start his own career. You know, the Mets didn't draft him in the fourth round for any nepotism. You know, he's got some help. And I can list it in the fourth round pick on that. They're smarter than that. So. What's it like to hear your father's words there? He's very proud of you. You can see it on his face. It's awesome. I'm so, you know, I'm so proud to be his son and, and uh, be able to not necessarily follow his footsteps and what he did with the Mets, but to um, add to my own legacy and wear my last name with a lot of pride. You've played some intense baseball at UConn. You guys just from the Big East tournament. But as you look out on the ballpark, any part of you feeling butterflies? Oh, so much. Yeah, I've never played at a stadium before. You know, I've always played on fields with bleachers and on the side. And <laughs> now I got seats around me. I got a locker room. Uh, I got you know fences out there with a, with a little scoreboard on top. It's amazing. I feel like I'm at an arcade. And, and the atmosphere is awesome. Uh, I heard the fans are unbelievable as well. I'm just excited to start Monday and, uh, and just get rolling. Being a tri-state area kid, um, you know, growing up in this area, do you still feel like you still have to adjust to like playing in Brooklyn, living in Brooklyn, doing things like that? Not at all. No, I, I, I played a lot of AAU ball growing up in New York um, for the Bayside Yankees. And, uh, I played against teams like New Service and, and New York Nine all around. Uh, places like in Brooklyn, the great grounds I played where, where he played when he was younger. So I'm used to the atmosphere and I love it. I got to be in the Northeast. You know? It's a lot grittier when you're up here. You have to get used to it and grind things out to the weather and everything else like that. But no, I, I, yeah, I'm excited to be up here. LJ, when you got drafted, who do you think was more excited, yourself or your dad? I think he, I think he was a little more. I was, we were both really excited. Um, the feeling was unbelievable. We, she just hit us you know, right away, and, and he jumped up, gave me a huge hug, and he's um, still on, on cloud nine, and I think we're starting to come down. What's your first reaction? Uh, I'm so excited. He's, he's stopping around where he grew up. My grandparents had uh, stayed here their entire lives. My uncle lived here, and um, this is where I would always visit my family, so I feel like I'm at my second home. LJ, what are your first impressions of Brooklyn so far? Uh, it's awesome. You know, the atmosphere is amazing. I've seen so far Coney Island and, and where we're staying um, at the Holiday Inn, downtown Brooklyn. Today I walked by the Barclay Center and got to see all that. And, um, I'm just taking it all in. As you daydream about your future in baseball, I think I might know the answer, but how far would you like to go? And do you feel like you're, you know, this is finally your first step? Yeah, I absolutely feel like this is my first step. Just got to get in the system and start playing. I, I dream to be playing for the Mets one day at City Field and hope for uh, a long time. And Opening day is on. Sorry, go ahead. Growing up in Connecticut, what fan were you? Yankees, Mets? Yeah. You know, I kind of switched. Um, growing up, as, when I was younger, I was a Mets fan. And then, uh, then my dad started working for the Yankees, so I became a Yankee fan. And then he coached the Orioles, as you know, and I was an Oriole fan. 
it is a back to Yankee fan when it came back to Yankees and now I'm a Met fan. Okay. I want to say that Jersey is a good Growing up well, here in Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, I'm very fortunate. I've always been a New York fan. You know, I follow the Dodgers. Willie Mays was my idol. I'm the type of guy that really pulls for all these things. You know, being born and raised here, and growing up here, you're part of that. So, you know, you root for all the other teams. But I work for the Yankees now, and let me tell you now, the Yankees have been, they've, they've been so good to me. Uh, I get treated with great, and you know, I'm my son. Uh, I can't, I get a look at my phone, so I'm proud of it. He works for the Mets, and that's great. You know, another organization. And, uh, uh, so hard to come here. So you work for one great organization, and now your son's playing for another great organization. How do you, how do you match that? How do you say it's just great? You know, like, uh, I'm just I'm lucky. I'm just lucky. So now he's going to go out and you know, do his thing. He's, he's better than I am. I'm telling you. He's, he's, I watched him. He's, he's more advanced than I was at his age. So I don't think because guys they have more things for the video that things that we didn't have with growing up. They work out for about once a year. They have great coaching. So, uh, it's exciting. I think we're all excited. 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 We're all excited
What's your earliest memories of your father playing? What stadium did you go to? Do you remember first? Um, I, I was born the year he retired, so uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about him playing, but I did play a lot of experience in the coach. Okay. You have a last piece of fatherly advice for opening day? Yes, have fun doing it. I think, you know, you're playing a game, you get paid to play a game, and you play for nothing when you're a kid, and you enjoy it. That's, that's the main thing. His, his work ethic is so good. If you go out there and play the game with passion, you have to have passion to play this game. And if you have passion playing it, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I saw you talking about Richard earlier. Yeah. Rich was my coach in Pittsburgh in 1986 when Jim Leland was in manager. Jim Leland was first year as manager. Rich was uh, first base coach in Pittsburgh. And I told him, right? Listen, I could have played another five years, but you know, he got cut my career short. I told him. And that's another thing, when I found out that Rich was, you know, LJ's uh, manager, his first pro manager, I said, LJ, let me tell you something, you cannot be with a better guy to be the first pro manager in baseball. He's going to teach you a lot about the game. He's a great guy. And I was excited that Rich was his manager. Hey, well, thank you very much.